Hello everybody, welcome back to the channel. Thought I would uh, show off my newest build this morning in my deer hunting gear. I'm uh, really getting into the AR platform. Been in there shooting it for about five years now. A little slow coming to the uh, parade as I was out of the States for about 11 years and couldn't own one there. But anywho, this is a 300 blackout, 10 and a half inch. And I built it specifically for tree stand hunting and scouting. Um, Florida swamps are really, really tight. Obviously any swamp's gonna be tight. So you don't really need much more for than a 100 yard shot, 125, 50 if you're lucky. Some areas, but for the most part. And of course in a tree stand, the smaller the better. So my tree, or my tree, my deer hunting kit, chest pack, binoculars, Carry a couple extra magazines. These are uh, Lancos, and they're really noisy. But good mags, they shoot reliably. But they're more of a bench rest mag than a hunting mag. Um, got some deer hanging for cleaning stuff. Got hooks, Israeli bandage. 100% deep for any time it's above freezing in the swamp. Cleaning gear. My GoPro rides in there. I have a lighter, some optic cleaning stuff, uh, camouflage makeup in there, a knife, carry a couple of phones in there. Got some deer cleaning stuff here, gloves, and a uh, monocular, just a cheap monocular. I'll use carry that a lot in my hand in case I drop it and lose it. I don't really care. These aren't, these are like 65 bucks, but they're uh, the Leupold Rogue absolutely incredible for 65 bucks um, they're 10 power and I couldn't be more happy with them I have some bigger Nikons and uh, it's kind of weird that parallax is a little different compared to like the full size but it's really clear and the cool part is the focus is dead precise for a, a distance so you can focus through the trees past them when you're sitting like in the tree stand or hunting whatever really worked out really well I call these Lanco that's actually Lancer I don't know why I have that from Anyway, so back to the build. Um, the clan of the tail hook. I have two of them, one of each size, and uh, they're pretty hard to come by, but they're out there. This is a CAC pistol brace uh, tube made just for the tail hook, and that's uh, a really good combination. Um, this is a thing I don't carry hunting, it's, it's really loud. This is metal, and it bangs on my tube, um, but I just have it on there occasionally. Uh, go with a Magpul Maid, um, oil bottle, battery carrier, whatever you want in there. I just really like the shape of the grip. <clears throat> I like the hump of the big back the beaver tail. But I noticed the um, mold has apparently changed because this lower receiver used to have one of these on here in black. I put one on in green and it took me an hour and a half to get this stupid thing roughly trimmed out where it would look kind of okay. Uh, so this, when you compare it to the other ones, is shaped a lot different. So, not a big fan. Got these, um, what is that? Um, I forget who makes these. Um, strike, strike, something like that. Anyway, it's got the, called the Cobra or something, trigger card. But I like the wider part because my finger rests real nicely on the other side. I've got three of these guys and just really like them. Uh, painted the whole thing in the Cerakote, or not Cerakote, gun coat. Uh, OD green and a black and then a custom mix of uh, the coyote color they call it got a um, Seekins, Seekins Precision got a Seekins Ultimate billet cover from their blue line I just kind of customized it a bit um, Troy Florian, low profile just keeping it small and light um, not a big fan of the Fab Defense 4 in front but this has a pretty obnoxious muzzle brake at the moment um, be getting another one soon but this was just an inexpensive one that I bought a long time ago and put on there um, and you do not want to be past the end of that guard it would be ugly so I use this exclusively big fan of the QD uh, points uh, normally I like a two bolt style but this was such a light build and this is billet um, really nice heavy screw it should be fine um, this is a Palmetto State Enhanced Trigger. It's okay. I specifically bought this trigger for a, to be in a rifle. 
and uh, it's, I needed something over five and a half pounds to be legal in um, high power. So that was what I come up with, and it's an okay trigger. It's a lot better than a factory, um, but it's it's not anything spectacular. But for a hunting trigger where you're not going to accidentally bump it, it's it's pretty good. Odin Work Switch. This is my absolute favorite safety. I have three of these guys, and just love them. The scope's kind of unique. Uh, friend of mine gave this to me. I uh, don't always have this on there. This is just when it's doing double duty. Um, anyway, the uh, scope is a Nikon Black Force 1000. Uh, they don't make them anymore. I, I literally found it and bought it, and they immediately stopped making scopes in general. Um, but this thing is awesome. Limited reticle, on off, on off, all the way around the rheostat. Target turrets, really easy to change, really easy to set to zero. So once you set it, you can just put it on zero. Since it's 300 blackout and I'm restricting myself pretty much to, you know, 150 yards or less. Um, 150 yards, this thing should be dropping around 4 inches, something around that, 3.96, depending on the app conditions. Um, you know, so pretty much 125 yards and less, pretty much dead on hold. Um, this got an old retro style charging handle. I'll be probably putting a radian in that. It's okay, but the radians are just so much better. Um, I'm a big fan of the Magpul or whatever battery assist device. Um, I'm left-handed. So when I'm at a public range, I gotta lock the bolt back. Or this magazine here, the bolt has to be open or it will not go in. It's just a drawback. So when I climb up the tree standing, I lock the bolt back. When I get out of the truck, I lock the bolt back. So this is really handy for that. Plus, if something happens, you have to use it with the wrong hand, we can, whatever. It does work as an ambidextrous battery assist device. Um, not a big fan of the ambidextrous mag releases, so I just run a regular one on that. Loophole scope mount. This is interesting. I uh, was on um, Optics Planet one night and uh, looking for scope mounts, and these are like $100, $130 at the time. And I saw they were listed at $596, and I'm like, well, that's weird. So anyway, I ordered one, and I thought about it a minute, and then I ordered five more. <laughs> so anyway, I got six of these. I gave one to a buddy. I'm using one. I got four, four just in spare that I paid six bucks a piece for. Um, really nice mount, obviously, overkill. But uh, at 100 yards, this thing is probably a um, minute, minute and a half, something like that. i got to get on a better bench and, and just kind of play with some different loads. But uh, so far, I really like it. Um, perfect for what I'm doing with it, you know, in the swamps and the tree stands and whatnot. And it, I've got a couple of pistols, air pistols, and they live in the 511 backpack. These, these things are just awesome. So anyway, Gen 1 Enforce. Again, a buddy of mine just gave this to me. To uh, the fact, I gave him a mount and he gave me a light. That's kind of a cool trade-off. Um, just, just nice to have, you know. Just go on there, whatever. Um, so anyway, that's my uh, my swamp setup. 100% deep, absolute must. Lots of gloves if you're gonna deal with hogs. You want to make sure you have plenty, of, plenty of gloves. Keep that stuff off of you. Keep a leatherman surge on here just to, uh, you know, fix whatever comes up. Anyway, thanks for watching guys. Appreciate it and uh, see you on the next video.